Welcome to Chris Cast, episode 42, The Meaning of Life. Uh, hey Google, what is the what is the meaning of 42? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. Alexa, what is the meaning of 42? Douglas Adams said he just thought 42 will do. There's no deeper reason. Alexa, what does 42 mean? 42 is usually defined as being two more than 40. Alexa, what does 42 mean in Douglas Adams? Here's something I found on the web. According to bant.com.au, in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Douglas Adams wrote that the number 42 is the answer to the great question of life, the universe, and everything. So, on our 42nd episode in Season 1, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to talk about Here's zealotry. I, I couldn't find that on Roku. So, I'm going to talk about zealotry and uh, what being a zealot means and how zealotry, while attributed mostly to people of faith and Christianity... A religious zealot. I believe there's zealotry all over in America right now, and I'm going to hunt it down and expose it for what it is, which is basically dementia. So I'm going to define extremism as dementia. Uh, in the next, uh, right after this break, I'm going to basically say that the same kind of tear away from reality that uh, Alzheimer's patients and people with mental and brain dementia have the same kind of uh, uh, misperception of the world as someone suffering from zealotry. And I'm going to take that chance right after this break. Welcome back to episode 42, uh, The Meaning of Life, uh, Liberty and the Pursuit of Happiness, or Life, the Galaxy and Everything, or I don't remember. I do love Douglas Adams, but because I have aphantasia, I do not have that book uh, logged in my head, even though I've read it numerous times and seen the movie numerous times. Anyway, zealotry. On to zealotry. Alexa, define zealotry. Zealotry is usually defined as undue or excessive zeal, fanaticism. Hey, Google, define zealotry. That's not a name I can respond to. By the way, here's the definition of zealotry, fanatical and uncompromising pursuit of religious, political or other ideals, fanaticism. Hey, Google. Can you define zealotry one more time, please? Here's the definition of zealotry, fanatical and uncompromising pursuit of religious, political, or other ideals, fanaticism. So, zealotry is what's happening with just about everybody about everything. Uh, Was on Reddit today with a guy who literally believes that Trump would wantonly take over a third term or... His goal has always been to be a despot. Uh, He has always had a desire to take over the world like Dr. No or whatever and whoever uh, Bond villain people have given the power of Trump to be. Even though, honestly, he was, you know, democratically elected based on a, a republic, democracy, representative democracy, one fair and square. Um, I guess if this were a parliamentary system, he would have, uh, he would have suffered from a, a crisis of, of faith, uh, and he would have been removed in a much more easy way than, uh, the, the various and sundry, uh, what is it called? Um, oh, impeachment's the word. Sorry about that. Um, been impeached, never removed, 
um, just using the power that uh, the Constitution gives him, the unbridled power that nobody's really used because of norms and values. But, you know, the letter of the law is different than the interpretation of law. And so I don't see anything but a bad president being a American president and dealing with um, a media and a Congress and a people that are so apoplectic uh, about his existence in the world that they literally have manifested um, a the final uh, uh, Trump as trying to implement a final solution against uh, Jews in America, uh, a a um, ethnic an ethnic uh, cleanse of all people of color a a uh, a personal attack on every every uh latinx person um any number of things and i was trying to wonder i was wondering why uh i was thinking to myself either everybody is faking it like like you know at some point someone was even able to make me believe that every single every single religious figure and every single priest and every single uh, minister uh, is in fact in on some sort of secret uh, multi-level marketing business plan uh, and there is not a minister or a priest or a bishop or a pope or anybody who remotely believes in the existence of a higher power, of a God, of a Christ, of a Mary, of a Holy Spirit, of a three-in-one, of a mystery, of a transubstantiation or anything. They just, they, it's all a, a giant religious con. Nobody believes in anything and it's just a hustle to make money. Uh, the church and all religion is a money-making venture and if you got... I guess if you gave troops truth serum to any anybody uh, in the uh, Catholic hierarchy or the Baptist hierarchy or the um, or the Anglican hierarchy or even in Islam or any place else, they would be like, "Oh yeah, we don't believe in God. This is just a long con. I just it's basically you know like like magic and." sleight of hand and NLP and brainwashing. I just do it for the money. Um, but I don't believe that's true because that would mean that everybody who uh, explores a an apoplectic, oh my God, uh, Trump is literally Hitler, literally Pol Pot. Um, eh, you know, quite possibly he, he could be um, Mussolini. Uh, Mussolini and Trump have a lot in common. But aside from that, he's no Stalin. He's no Putin. Actually, I don't want to be a dick to Putin. Putin is doing the best he can with an, any number of global boots on his neck. Um, especially since uh, I don't believe a th I don't believe a thing about Russian intervention. To the point where my best friend from college and roommate asked me on the DL over brunch the other weekend, whether or not, you know, no matter what I say, he still believes that I'm a Russian asset. But I don't believe that there's any Russian intervention. Never have thought that there's any Russian intervention. There's American intervention in America, that's for sure. And if you want to call American intervention in America, that's fine. Uh, if you want to believe that there's corporate intervention in, and if you want to call corporate intervention in America, Russian intervention, that's fine too. Um, my spooky friends think that there really is Chinese intervention in America, but I don't know. They're, they're, they're zealots too. God bless them, but they're zealots and extremists. And I think that zealotry is a type of, uh, of, of, mental illness i believe that it's a it's it's a it's some sort of place that your brain puts you in uh i don't know a place of extreme vigilance or or kind of a a uh programmatic activation i don't know uh oh what's the name of that movie um the manchurian candidate I think people put themselves into their own Manchurian candidacy. Um, 
for example, I mean, I believe that America and, and the United States, and I believe that humanity has definitely imprinted itself on the globe, but I don't believe remotely, and I don't think you can prove it with science if you're not being a zealot about it. I, I believe that the same kind of zealotry is uh, being is being shouldered by uh, by environmental fanaticism. Uh, could be uh, ecological fanaticism. It could be population fanaticism. It could be uh, extinction fanaticism. I believe that the same kind of fanaticism that makes people do whatever it takes in order to uh, pave a pathway to a to Jesus return to earth uh, by whatever uh, rebuilding Solomon's temple or whatever it takes to uh, finding a flawless red calf. I don't know, but whatever it takes, people will go to whatever will do whatever it takes. I mean, they will depopulate with extreme prejudice a population. They will take down an ethno state an ethno state. They will they will kill enemy. They will um they will project every single sin uh upon man to someone who is basically just a uh, a heel. A heel in a wrestling match. Um, the amount of of supernatural powers that have been attributed both to Trump and not to Trump are amazing. Uh, on one swing of the punch by a fanatic anti-Trumper, uh, at one swing of the punch, it's uh, Trump is going to take over America with extreme prejudice and throw everybody into FEMA camps. And with the other swing of the punch it's uh trump is completely an ignoramus a, st a stupid moron uh incapable of taking his own breath unless he has um a bipap machine i don't know uh, on the other hand he is an all oppressive overlord not unlike a stalin uh or not even remotely more like uh the joker or or some uh uh, some DC comic or Marvel comic, uh, Thanos, uh, Thanos is what Trump is. And on the other hand, he is a buffoon and a fool and a simpleton and an idiot. And I don't know how anybody who's not fanatically a fanatical zealot who doesn't know what they're saying, except they want to say all the words in an attempt to uh, fill the void with chatter, I don't believe that anybody can believe anything that's coming out of their mouth unless they're unless they've got dementia or some maybe situational dementia, whether it's uh, the dementia of existential panic or existential climate collapse fear or or really just. Oh, it's got to be situational, right? Like, uh, after I had a really big breakup, my therapist told me that I had situational depression. Um, there have been times in my life where I've had situational anxiety disorder signified by irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, there have been times, you know, where I've, um, I've had situational uh, anxiety or depression, like I just said. And, um... I believe that this dementia can be situational in response to uh, a perceived threat that is so extreme that your that your body has some sort of rapture response, some sort of uh, speaking in tongues. I don't even know, but I definitely think that uh, a zealot never sees a zealot in the mirror. They see a righteous man or a righteous woman. So if you call Trumpy zealots, they don't like that. If you call liberals or progressive zealots, they don't like that. If you call um, any of these particular groups that are protesting, if you call them zealots, if you say that they're uh, tipping 
at windmills, uh, tilting at windmills. They they won't believe you. They are righteous people. They uh, are clear headed, and the science uh, is 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 clear. In the same way that uh, prophets have said, uh, the 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 Bible, the text, the uh, the word is clear. Uh, the burning bush is clear. Uh, the the carvings in the stone tablets is clear. Are clear. It's all the same stuff, man. And uh, and now uh, you can add upon that. And it might be separate, you know, the panic surrounding. And it's so easy, man. It's so easy to gin people up into behaving this way. Uh, that's why I believe that the founding fathers created the uh, created the electoral college and all the other ball works. I mean, this this country was created upon a uh, a very uh, big ship. It was created with any number of bulwarks against making hard turns, making uh, extreme changes, uh, throwing any babies out with the bathwater. Um, and uh, I don't know. I mean, even I get into the existential panic once in a while when it comes to, um, I mean, I get... Oh man, when it comes to feeling like I'm not going to have m enough money for rent or not enough have enough money to pay uh to pay staff or any of those kinds of things, it can really swirl out of control where it has no bearing on reality. I mean, in my 50 years, I've never been uh I've never been kicked onto the street. I've never I mean, every single fear that I've ever had has never come to pass. I mean, any of the big ones. So it's amazing. And, and I don't even have the ability to imagine uh, the worst case scenario. Like I said, I had this thing called aphantasia, which is the inability to picture things in my head. Like, uh, I don't think it's anything like, you know, sociopathy or, or psychopathy, but... I believe that there is, there lacks a part in my brain that allows me to visualize something so extreme, like a an, a real belief that, um, you know, in 10 years, there's going to be, uh, 11 years, there's going to be a complete collapse and the world's going to end. The only time I ever believed that, and it still didn't keep me from moving to D.C., I think I moved to D.C. because of it, was the existential crisis of thermonuclear war at Armageddon in terms of uh, World War III. And then I just moved to GW, which means that... Uh, hey, Google, how many miles is there between the Pentagon and George Washington University? It's 5.3 miles to get to the George Washington University from the Pentagon on foot. So that is much closer as the bird flies. So uh, suffice to say that within that, I would be vaporized no matter where I was in Washington, D.C., because I would assume that the Pentagon would be ground zero for a nuclear attack. So I pretty much wanted to get uh, erased. And the same thing, like zombie apocalypse, I want to die. Uh, um, uh, the stand sort of, uh, virus, ah, kill me. Um, if there was, uh, what else? Zombie apocalypse, nuclear Armageddon, uh, asteroid attack. Uh, please, you know, let me be where the asteroid hits. Like, I'm not that attached to life. Like, my desire to remain alive would probably not isn't so strong as to the fact that I would want to climb upon other people's ability to live so as to make sure that I remain alive like um I'm happy to be alive 
but I don't have this, uh, this, this desire, this genetic desire to make sure that my DNA and genetic material move forward towards the proliferation. I mean, you know, to be honest, the most true thing that I ever heard was Agent Smith saying that uh, humanity is a cancer. So you don't want me to make your leader. You don't want to make me your leader. Uh, basically, I think that, uh, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I like, I like, I like uh, Reef and I like green sea turtles and I like humpback whales and I like um, nanny geese and I like uh, sea otters and river otters and I like beavers much more than I like an elk. I like elk uh, and reindeer much more than I like uh, stinky humans. There's a couple... A couple Instagram models that I wouldn't mind uh, existing in the world. But outside of that, you know, it's just, it's uh, it's uh, uh, complaining with a lot of, uh, of people who are really vulnerable to programming and being ginned up and being uh, activated and turned extreme. And, you know, at the end of the day, the same thing that I'm going to say about most of my liberal and progressive friends, they're going to say about me, which is I'm appalled about the crazy, mean-spirited, hateful, terrible, insulting things that they say about their fellow Americans. I mean, I believe that 90% of all of my liberal friends wouldn't mind that much if every deplorable in America were to suddenly keel over dead. I find, I believe that, that they really think that America would be a better place without, without uh, any of the people who are clutching their Bibles or clutching their guns. Uh, I feel like they would like to remove them from uh, the face of America and replace them with something and someone better. Uh I don't know who that would be. Maybe just maybe just urbane people. Uh, considering how poor the education system is, uh, K through postdoc is in America for just the rabble. I would all have to be rich people, and it would all have to be uh, people whose family multi generational multi general generationally have made for the last two or three generations at least uh, 250 a year every year of their life. Because other than that, everybody else is deplorable. There's lots of people who believe in Jesus. All colors, black people, brown people, a lot of people who believe in Vishnu, a lot of people who believe in uh, that Buddha is a transcendent, uh, ascended master. That's not science-based. I know you guys all admire uh, meditation, but that's not science-based. Uh, I know that uh, that meditation has been reduced to brain chemistry and so on and so forth, but there are a lot of people for thousands of years who believe that transcendence and vibrational uh, ascendancy is a real thing. So how is that going to line up? Uh, with uh, a science-based uh, world and uh, a world that is a major majority in the world there are, is a majority of magical thinking people a majority of the entire world believes that Santa is real um, and the level of contempt of people that I admire the amount of contempt that they have for them um, who are just folk man uh is just really depressing, which means that those are zealots too. You know, there's zealotry coming out of the top universities. There's zealotry. Uh, I mean, I studied uh, postmodernism, and I wonder if Ellen Zixu, Ellen Zixu, or or Jacques Derrida, or any of these guys knew that their that their theories of deconstructionism was going to be weaponized. Um, but it has been, 
It's been weaponized like the Bible. It's been weaponized like the Quran. Uh, it's been re- weaponized like the Talmud. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how all of this plays out because nobody can see, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, hell is other people. Well, zealotry is other people. I'm not, I'm not crazy. You're crazy. No, I'm not crazy. You're crazy. No, I have science. No, I have God. No, I have this. I have that. Um, it's all going to make all y'all sick. Uh, luckily, I'm not going to get sick because I've got this amazing outlet. Anyway, that's enough. I'm done. I am going to come back in a few with the closing remarks, and I'll talk to you soon. All y'all love you. Bye-bye. Welcome back to an extreme ranty, ranty, ramble. Sorry about that. I don't even know how clear that was. You're going to really have a portal into my deepy, deepy, brainy head. Um, Like I said, my my mind is so open that my brains fall out. Anyway, this is Chris Cast, episode 42. uh, And uh, this is the closing remarks. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you share and subscribe. I hope you listen to more. I hope you wait on bated breath for the next episode. I hope you had fun. I hope that you like and comment. And I hope you review and give me stars on whatever platform you use. If you have access to Apple Podcasts, I would love the stars and reviews there. And... um you can reach me at chris at abraham.su. You can find me at chrisabraham.com. Um, I'm at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Facebook, at Chris Abraham on Instagram, at Chris Abraham on YouTube. I'm linkedin.com slash in slash Chris Abraham. You can reach me via WhatsApp uh, or text at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. Uh, you can also call me there, but I won't answer unless we're buds. And even then, I might not answer. So leave a message. It'll be translated to text and Google Voice to me. Anyway. I'd love to chat. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good to hear. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you. I will let you know. Have a good day. Very interesting. Oh, I, I told you I have sidekicks that are that are computers, right? So, uh, and if you want to reach me, make a date to call uh, calendly dot com uh, slash Chris Abraham slash uh, thirty. Give us thirty minutes. Sixty if we're old chums from school. Uh, Fifteen if you just want to yell at me. Uh, and uh, Auf Wiedersehen. Good night. Guten Tag. Guten Abend. Good night, uh, a bientôt, a tout à l'heure, uh, auf Wiedersehen, good night. Good night.